Hi everyone, so can I just first of all ask, can you all hear me at the back before I start? Yes. Yes, because I'm aware sometimes I don't project my voice loud enough when I don't have a microphone in front of me. So my name's Emily Davison and I am a writer, I'm a student and I'm also a journalist. So I've written for publications including Huffington Post UK and The Guardian and I've recently worked alongside Channel 4 for their No Go Britain series. And um, I work very closely alongside charities. I'm a disability campaigner, so I've worked alongside RNIB, I've worked alongside Blind Children UK, Guide Dogs and Scope on campaigns around um, you know, making uh, disability more inclusive and making society accept and embrace disability, disability more. And most recently I worked alongside RNIB on their Talking Books campaign to make more books accessible for people with sight loss. Um, but today I'm going to be talking to you all about the need for more accurate representation in children's literature because, you know, what I have heard from people in the past is that, oh, but there is this character in this book and they've got vision impairment or there's this character who's got a disability and whilst it's great that there are characters who are a presence in literature who have a disability or are of diversity, the point of the matter is that often, more often than not, they're not always 100% accurate and that's what essentially the Ambassador Network has, has been set up for. Um, so I mean, I, I think it's amazing to see so many of you here because you all care about diversity in literature and you all think it's uh, an important matter, as do I. Um, I also just want to say, if any of you saw my dog, the one who's been flirting with everybody, that's Unity, my guide dog. Mm -hmm. And uh, as it happens, I'm actually working on at the moment on a picture book idea, which includes a guide dog. So, no, if only publishers. <laughs> <laughs> so. So naturally, literature has always been a really important part of my life ever since I was around the age of six. And I use books to transport myself to other worlds and find out about new places and other walks of life. And I used it as a mode to transport myself from my hospital ward when I was very ill to other worlds where I could be wherever I wanted to be. But as I was growing up, I, just, I never found characters of diversity in the books I read. I was always perplexed to see that there was never a character who had a guide dog or a character who used a wheelchair in these books. And growing up, that made me feel very alienated because the only characters that I was seeing that had a, a disability or some form of an impairment was either two things. So on the one hand, they could be very weak and very um, unable to be self-sufficient and they, they weren't very palatable characters. Or on the other hand, they could be very mean, bitter characters like Captain Hook from Peter Pan. And for me, I, I felt very perplexed because I thought to myself, why is it that characters who don't have a disability are often given the roles of protagonist where their possibilities are boundless, yet characters like myself are not? And I think that in turn led for why I often felt so alienated and estranged from my peers when I was growing up in primary school especially. And more often than not, I would find myself sitting alone at playground thinking to myself, why is it that people can't understand me? Why is it that I can't find myself in a book and I can't relate to the books that I'm reading? And my classmates didn't understand why I needed to have a cane or why the print of my text was like five million times bigger than their own and they didn't understand it. But perhaps if there had been characters of uh, diversity in particular visual impairment or disability in these books who were living lives uh, as they wanted to and were presences in literature and just living their lives the way they wanted to and you know maybe had a mobility aid and where that discourse could then follow where the teachers could explain this person has to use this because of this but that doesn't mean they're different that just means they have to do something differently <coughs> maybe that would have in turn made things more, more better for me and it would have stopped the bullying and stopped the you know the the, the the relationship that I had with my peers being a very, very negative one. And I mean, I now know this because I'm currently studying for a master's degree in children's literature. And this year, one of my projects was looking at disability representation in picture books because it's something, something I'm very passionate about. And I went to a primary school in Hackney and I worked with two groups of five to six year olds in a classroom setting. And I read them some picture books with different representations of disability. Some of them were immersive fiction and some of them were more, more like inclusion fiction. And what this in turn led after I read these books to these children, it facilitated a discussion where they you know, were de developing signs of showing advocacy, of empathy and understanding towards disability because they had seen characters of diversity and they were able to have a discourse between myself and the, the classroom support staff and the other peers about disability and what it meant. And I think that was a really positive thing because they were able to form a connection about disability. 
Um, I mean, one particular book I want to mention as an example of how consultancy and how uh, getting it right can be a very positive thing when someone consults people of diversity is a book called Moses Goes to a Concert by Isaac Milman. Some of you might have heard of it if you're into disability and picture books. And this book was published in the US. And uh, the reason it was made was because uh, the author wanted to include characters with uh, hearing impairments. So uh, Milman worked alongside two deaf um, teachers who taught at deaf school and studied them very closely the way they did sign language and ha how their facial expressions changed and was thus able to produce a picture book where sign language was used and it was explained in the book very clearly through illustrations and that was a very positive example and it was had received a lot of awards it was very well received by a lot of people in America and it is also known here in the UK as well I mean I couldn't use it alas in my uh, my session because it was American Sign Language and obviously we, we use BSL but that's an example of the way it can be very a very po positive thing and uh, this is why I'm so passionate about serving as an ambassador for Clusive Minds because I'm all about communicating the message that uh, there needs to be more accurate representations of diversity in children's literature because I want to enable children to feel more accepting and understanding towards disability and move forward with building a more inclusive community and a better society towards diversity in general because I don't want there to be another child sitting there on the playground step feeling alienated and feeling unvalued and secluded like I did and that's why this we're all here today essentially we're all here because we care about diversity in literature and making it a children's literature a more diverse place and that's why Inclusive Minds founded this network and why I'm a member of the network because we want to enable you as a body of individuals who work in the publication and the production of Trims Literature to feel more empowered to effectively research and create characters of diversity in the books that you will produce. Consultancy is a key part of this journey. If you want to place a character who is of diversity, this network is designed to help you feel empowered to effectively research this and collaborate with us as people of diversity to ensure that the books that you're creating are accurate, realistic and above all, positive. If you invest in creating these characters that re represent what a diverse culture we are, it can only in turn help the market of children's literature grow and flourish into something truly amazing. And I'm going to just quote someone who I've read recently in my children's literature degree. A famous children's literature scholar once said that children's literature can serve as a mirror to reflect readers and a window to, for them to see other people's worlds. And together, if we work collaboratively as a body of people who care about diversity, we can truly ensure that this is the case and that for future, children who open the pages of a book can say, that person's like me, and they can feel fully accepted and they can feel that they have a place in society. Thank you.